Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present the featured bout of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission Chairman William Eastman, Vice Chairman NFL Hall of Famer Willie Buchanan, Commissioners Cal Soto, Andrew Kim, Elmer Costas, Ernie Weiner, Frank Osvedo, and former welterweight champion of the world Carlos Palomino. Executive Officer Richard DeCure, Timekeeper at the bell and counting for the knockdown seconds, Debbie Garcia. The three physicians in attendance at ringside are Dr. Robert Karn, Dr. Adam Karn, and Dr. Michael DeLuca. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Hank Ellis Peru, Joan Ortega, and John Shorley. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, Hall of Fame referee Marty Dinkin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance here at ringside and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, in the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with silver and weighing 145 and one half pounds, he has an excellent professional record of 45 victories with only two losses, and he has scored 29 knockouts. From Lewiston, Maine, here is the former three-time champion of the world, Joey Sabotage Gamal. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing a red with blue, white, and gold trim, and weighing in at 146 pounds. He brings to the ring one of the great professional records in boxing history. 97 victories, 82 by knockout, with only two defeats and one draw. Presenting the former junior lightweight world champion, the former lightweight world champion, the former super welterweight champion of the world, Thomas y Caballeros, whom Julio Cesar Chavez and the things that are going on in his life. He's separated from his wife. He is surrendering his entire purse of $1.5 million to the Mexican government to cover back taxes. He's coming off the embarrassment of his proud career. He is filled with emotion, anger, and venom. And I'm just wondering if Joey Gamache's timing might have been a little off to fight Chavez, but Chavez Fought De La Hoya at 139. He's at the heaviest he's ever fought. 146 tonight. Gamach said that I have to discourage Chavez early. Keep him off balance. And Gamach going right at Chavez from the opening bell. Yeah, he also said that Chavez has been declining since Cornell Whitaker. He said Chavez is not the best today. For too many wars, he is. Degraded some in his boxing skills, but he knows that Chavez still has the experience and the skill. Chavez facing many problems, haunted by Oscar De La Hoya. He's frustrated, confused, a bit disoriented, and he is extremely depressed because of all these problems. And he looks a little bit pudgy tonight, carrying a few extra pounds. And uh, Oscar De La Hoya, I'm sure. Gamach looking at that left eye that you uh, kind of helped open, according to uh, Chavez, four months ago. What do you think the condition of that cut is four months later? And well, actually, um, Julio Cesar Chavez claims 
that that cut is no longer there, or that that scar is no longer there. So uh, we should see a uh, um, a Chavez uh, at 100%. I mean, yeah, but but Joe Dimash goes for the cut. I feel that Joey Dimash is going to go for the cut. He feels that uh, that cut there uh, that I put on there four months ago uh, is still fresh. What do you mean that you put on there? Yeah. <laughs> that was his sparring partner. Or was it his kid? That was his sparring or partner. His sparring partner. partner. <laughs> he said it opened up three weeks before the fight with you, Oscar, in the gym. It was reopened by his three-year-old son. You know, you, you're a big fan of, of Chavez. You studied him very closely. So you knew him in his peak, and when he fought you, what was the decline that you saw in Chavez in your fight? You know, actually, um, I sparred with Chavez when I was 16 years old, and he was preparing himself for uh, Maldrick Taylor. I had the opportunity and the honor to be in the same ring with him at that age, so I kind of had an idea of what his style is. At that age, at that weight that I was, I was weighing featherweight, 126 pounds. I felt that I can uh, outspeed this guy and outpower this guy. So uh, I had a little advantage going into this fight, uh, June 7th, and I felt that, uh, that I was uh, the stronger man up in that ring. Chavez in the corner, working here. Oscar, you surprised 146 pounds, the heaviest uh, in his career. Uh, you think he's feeling all of that? Well, actually, I'm not surprised because Julio Cesar Chavez, of course, he does train hard, but uh, he's not taking this fight very seriously. He's uh, not working as hard, and he feels that uh, he wants bigger and better fights. He wants to take a match because he thinks it's, it's an easy fight, but uh, he's very wrong tonight. How could you say he's not taking this seriously? He feels if he can win his next three fights, he has a rematch with you. If he loses this, it's over, and he wants it. One of the reasons he wants to win is because he said the champion's got to go out with dignity. A real true champion will always stay at his weight. He will not go more than five, four, three pounds at the most. Round number two. Julio Cesar Chavez, 97-2-1 with 82 knockouts. Joey Gamash, 45-2 with 29 KOs. Well, yeah, and already in that first round, Gamash felt the power of Chavez. Chavez has all his power in that left hook. He has a nice style, but he throws the gancho, the, the, the hook punch. And he landed that well in that first round. There's another hook right there from Chavez. Oscar, you said you, you felt uh, that you could outspeed Chavez. Uh, do you think it was the, the supremacy of your speed or the de a, a decline in Chavez? We're trying to get a, a feeling of where Chavez is here in his 101st fight. Does he have a shot of returning to the top form, or is he fooling himself? I think Chavez it still is, uh, it still is strong. He's still strong. He's still fast. But um, speed is what just overwhelms him. Maldrick Taylor did it. Bernard Whitaker, myself. And I feel that speed, he just cannot take speed. Absolutely. And the last thing that anybody loses, as you know, uh, Oscar, is the power. And already landing with those powerful shots here in the second round is Chavez. Right. Chavez, of course, like I said before, he's still strong and he's still fast and very intelligent up in that ring. And it appears as though when Gamache moves to his left, he's circling away from that powerful left hook of Chavez. Takes that power away from him, but Chavez also has a good right hand and he's able to steer opponents into that left hook using the right hand. Chavez is very strong with both hands, uh, the left hook, the right hand, the straight jab. He's a very experienced boxer. He has more than 100 fights, and I feel that uh, Chavez still has it. Yeah, but he says in tonight's fight, I'm only 60 to 70 percent. I'd be lying to myself if I said I was 100 percent. But he also says the past for me is dead forever. The double left hook from Gamache on the attack. Taking it to Chavez. Chavez says he wanted to end this one as quickly as possible. He says there's no other choice but to knock Gamach out. He tried to silence the critics. 
Chavez standing in front of Gamash, but uh, this is a tendency in his whole career. Often has no regard for his opponents, whether he has power or not. He'll take punches to get his in. Oh, he has a good chin, but he's got to be worried now about uh, the cuts that might open up and reopen. Well, some of that action from that second round. Watch the quick movements, these jerky style movements from Gamash on the attack. But Chavez uses his experience, takes his time, lands one punch. Doesn't waste much energy. And just a, an example of the hand speed of Gamash. Even though Gamach is not landing those punches, he's taking Chavez out of balance and making Chavez uh, be wide open for, for other shots. Oh yeah, and he's also keeping Chavez's eyes busy. Chavez, when he is being punched at, he's protecting himself and not punching you. The best defense is a great offense. Gamach, fight plan to try to keep Chavez off balance. Don't do it by running around the ring. And the match has been right in front for the most part of his opponent. But he says, I won't stand in the slug and I'll try to dictate the pace. I'll also try to keep turning him. Right, move him around. Right. What he means by that is when you, when you punch hard, you have to set your feet on the canvas. You have to dig in. What Gamach wants to do is move every time that that uh, Chavez sets in, he wants to move. And Gamach is one of those who feels that Chavez's skills have faded. Going back to the Meldrick Taylor fight in which Chavez was saved with two seconds to go and that fight was stopped. And he feels the kind of fights that Chavez has, has had, that the clock is ticking, that it catches everyone, and that Chavez is no exception. But also, could it be catching Gamach, who's 30 years old? But he comes out looking sharp here in the first couple of rounds. Oh, yeah, but it's still early in this fight, and Chavez is notoriously a slow starter. He knows there's plenty of time in this fight. Oh, downstairs to the body, and see those body shots, especially in long fights, body shots accumulate. You shake off the shots to the head. There's a low blow to good sportsman. Double left hook from Chavez. Downstairs to the body brings your opponent's guard down, and then you go over the top to the head. The chanting for Chavez. Keeps his chin up in the air rather high, doesn't he, Oscar? I think he does. After he throws his right hand or his left hook, he keeps his chin up high, which is very keeps, dangerous. Keeps it exposed. Coming down to the final 10 seconds in round number three of this scheduled 10-round fight. Thank you. 
This has been a salient characteristic of Julio Cesar Chavez. Downstairs to the body and then over to the top of the head. The punch right on the border line from Julio. And to throw that punch, you got to dig around under the elbow. Round number four, two former world champions fighting now to continue on upstairs in boxing, Julio Cesar Chavez, the legend. Joey Dimash, the former two-time champion. Uh, we have a lateral movement from Dimash and that jab. He says the jab tonight is my most important weapon. And this is the legend of Julio Cesar Chavez. He knocked out 27 of his first 28 opponents. It was 20, it was 87 and 0 before the draw against Whitaker. Undefeated in 90 fights before the loss to Frankie Randall. And now Marty Simon settling down. Joey Gamash. He's got a strong slap from Marty Duncan, the referee. Wow. What a slap, ouch. That would hurt. Chavez, who held world titles in three weight classes for a combined 10 years. All-time record, 27 consecutive undefeated title fights, surpassing the mark of 26 by Joe Lewis. Record total of championship fights, 34. The legend of Julio Cesar Chavez. The crowd responds. Really pouring it on is Chavez. Do you see anything differently in Chavez tonight, Oscar? Well, actually, I can see Chavez's punches coming in a mile away. He's lunging too much, but he's still he's doing damage to the match. Again, the left hook. Chavez, one of the great fighters. Oh, a headbutt. Oh, he got it. Oh, a headbutt. And Marty oh, Duggan again with a warning. Brings uh, some life to Gamach. Chavez, of course, known for the punishment that he can deliver, the pinpoint precision. Knowing how to finish a fight, knowing the moment to turn it up. Yeah, knowing when to turn it up and turn it on, that is part of timing. That only comes with experience the experience of 100 fights knowing when your opponent is ready to go now look at chavez stalking trying to cut off the ring make gamach expend his energy make gamach fight it solidly go downstairs to the body those best, will pay off late in this fight best round for sugar Chavez went out and stunned Gamash. That big left hook. Gamash tried to hold on to tie up. Once again, big left hook right on the side of the jaw. Gamash was stunned. He held on. He tied up. And then later in the round, went in with the head. Chavez didn't like that. Marty Dinkin, the referee, saw it, acknowledged it. And now Chavez has taken the control. What Joey Gamash did not want to give up. No doubt about that. And you know, that's where a crowd can help you if you're somebody like Chavez and hurt you if you're an opponent like Gamash. That crowd, so deafening in this arena, makes you feel like you are really hurt. You can't concentrate because the, the, the crowd is screaming so loud. It breaks.
keeps your concentration. Not only that, Nat, there's no response to a punch that a Gamash may right. go in. And of course, Chavez's punches are magnified. And you have three judges around the ring also that could be subliminally affected by that. Subliminal messages. You know, right. Chavez right now is just, uh, he looks excellent actually. He looks uh, strong. He looks fast. He looks like uh, he really wants to uh, climb up the ladder once again and uh, have the rematch with me. Are you glad to see him take control in this fight? I'm very glad. I just want him to uh, have a great performance, do good in this fight, and I wish him the best of luck in every single fight. Well, of course, except for mine, but, you know, I just wish him the best. Takes it, moves in on Chavez, tries his left hook. Chavez now starting to add up some power shots. Yeah, you really see the difference in strength of these two fighters. Chavez has his comfortable weight as this welterweight division. But Joey Gamash coming up to the welterweight division can't match that power inside the ring. Big right hand from Chavez. But G Gamach showing his heart gets right back yeah. in there. Tough haul yeah. for Gamach because you have Chavez who is known for the solid chin and head and taking punches. Gamach not really known as a as a power puncher. He's not known as a power puncher, but if he uses his speed here in this fight for Chavez, he can uh, he can do some damage in the long run. I've never been hit with an easy punch. They all hurt. Just a matter of putting him out there, and now the jab pushes Chavez, Gamach away. Yeah. Chavez really taking control. Power shots. Doubling and activity. Up. He is on top of Gamach. He's on him like a cheap set of trunks. Oh. Well, Gamach gets three quick ones in, but gets a big right back. Oh, and another headbutt. Second one, and they're going to take a point. Marty Denkin, the referee, has given Gamach a couple of warnings and a couple of slaps. Ten seconds to go. Chavez continues to pile on the points. Oh, yeah, powerful left hand. Boom, look at that shot. Oh, I think, actually, the back of the head of Joey Gamach hit the canvas, and then he bounced back up without leaving his feet. And then uh, Gamach, too aggressive. Actually, the shoulder, I think, hit the face of Chavez. But uh, Marty Dinkin said, that's enough of that. No headbutting spearing. Chavez saying, as a champion, I want to go out with dignity. Did not want to go out after the fight against Oscar De La Hoya and is obsessed about returning and getting a rematch. He says he plans three fights, starting with this one here against Joey Gamach, and then a rematch possibly in April or May of 97 against Oscar De La Hoya. And Oscar, I know you welcome that opportunity. Almost definitely. I will uh, give Mr. Julio Cesar Chavez an opportunity anytime. How about right now? <laughs> we can do it now, no problem. <laughs> I think he's a little bit busy right now. And if Chavez uh, wins those three fights, which leads to the rematch, certainly energizes the fight with uh, Oscar. Sure, but what if he doesn't get a, get a knockout tonight? Does that, does that really hurt Julio Cesar Chavez? Actually, well, if he just gets a good victory under his belt, he will he will be known as a as a as a man who just came back and wants to wants to regain his crown. Well, it looked back in that fourth and fifth round that he was on his way to a knockout, but something rejuvenated Joey Gamash. 
Chavez wins these three and gets the rematch with Oscar, he will be standing strong by the story of uh, the cut interfering in the fight with Oscar De La Hoya, and that was the reason for the way it ended, having nothing to do with a possible decline of Chavez. Big left hook, blood right from the nose now. Oh, of Gamash. Gamash walking into it. Oh, again walking into it. His corner does not want him to stand in front of Chavez for good reason. And Chavez has found the way to finally slow down Gamash. Oh, yeah, you see how high Joey Gamash carries his chin. This is a time where he really needs to tuck that chin down. Both fighters pulling on the back of their opponent's heads. It appears as if now, Sean, that uh, Chavez has kind of cleared his mind of all that is going on to him outside of the ring. Oh, yeah, this is a fighter in Chavez who knows how to focus his thoughts on one thing, and that's the business at hand. Right now, he's got Gamach right where he wants him. Gamach still game, though. Tough kid. He said, I know they brought me in this fight to lose. He says, Chavez says he wants a tough fight. And he's going to get it, but he, I think they are overlooking me, says Joey Gamache. because Gamach uh, cannot handle pressure, so they want Chavez to just keep on going forward. He's known for his power in his left hand, but Chavez can crack with the right hand, too. He did just there. Once again, oh, chin too high. And now the biggest weapons for Joey Gamash going into this fight are essentially being taken away. His quickness and his speed have met with the power of Chavez. Yeah, they had a busy corner over there, and they're trying to wipe up some of the debris that's left over. And that's in Joey Gamash's corner. Sean, you gave Gamash, who said he wanted to get off to the quick start, you gave him points in those first couple of rounds. You called the first round a draw. Second round you gave to Gamash. And the last four to the steamrolling Julio Cesar Chavez. Yeah, it's been a different story from those first two rounds. Gamash, of course, wanted a fast start, but you can't just stop after that fast start, can you, Oscar? Right, I mean, Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, of course, he's known to, to, to start off slow. Yeah. He's known to uh, pick it up in the later rounds. And right now, Chavez is just putting on the pressure. He's uh, doing an excellent job against Joey Gamar. You know, I keep seeing him look over here, down here at, at you here at the broadcast table. What are you thinking when you see him fight? Well, when I see him fight, I, I just, I try to study him. I try to look at his feet, the way he's out of balance, the way um, he's throwing his punches uh, with sometimes no power at all because he's out of balance. I feel that those right there are keys to being very successful against, against Chavez in the rematch. How about Gamash? What does he have to do? Does, does he have a chance here? Gamash still has a chance. He has to keep on using speed, keep on throwing that left jab, that fast left jab. Not only two jabs, but three at a time, four at a time. And it keeps Chavez out of balance. How far do you think Chavez is off his prime? I feel Chavez is probably at maybe 85%. I feel Chavez um, still has a power. He will always have the knowledge and the experience up in the ring to be, to be a, a great champion and to always be victorious. I feel that Chavez just maybe lost speed a bit, but he's probably at 85%. And now he's also facing a guy who has tremendous heart in Joey Gamash. You remember the fight in which he lost his title to Tony Lopez? Gamash in that fight 
severely swollen left eye from the second round on. He took 14 consecutive hard rights before finally going down, which was the first time he went down in his career. So he knows how to take a punch, and he's proving that again tonight. Yeah, he said that loss to Tony Lopez made him a much better fighter. Now more confident, more complete, knows that he can take punches and come back with his own. Oh, he takes some heavy left hooks there. A lot of red. Decided to trade. Might not be the best position for Gamash, but at this point, he saw a little bit of an opportunity there. Oh. And that shot. Oh, they trade rocking shots to the head. Chavez turning it on. Checks in in the corner of Joey Gamash. Tough kid. Blood from the nose, both his eyes showing some discoloration. Mouth open, and there's what he has to stare across the ring at. The eyes of a tiger. The crowd and this crowd. Yeah, response to that when they see that shot up on the scoreboard. Some of the head work from Joey Gamash. A blatant foul. That was a warning from the referee. Chavez used every second in that corner sitting on the stool. Experience. Gamacha talked about how he feels he has matured now, that when he was younger, he wasted a lot of movement. Always on the move. And right now with Chavez, seems as if he has resorted to the movement, which he might have to do to stay away from yeah. some of these shots. In fact, that's what they're begging for in his corner. Jimmy Glenn, Tony Lampron, Jimmy Williams asking for more movement from Gamash, but I think Gamash needs to use the movement Oscar with punches. I feel what he has to do is uh, just keep on moving side to side, give Chavez angles, and at the same time throw punches, throw the speed, and take Chavez out of balance. Because right now Chavez, of course, he's putting the pressure, he's winning this fight, and he's just uh, overwhelming Gamash. Oh, yeah, dictating the pace, no doubt. Something that Gamash did not want Chavez to do. These two fighters are half pound apart, but they look like they're in different weight classes. Yeah. Yeah, you see the strength in the back and the upper body of Julio Cesar Chavez. And the weight for Joey Gamach, and he knows it, is in his trunk and in, in his uh, legs. Whoa! Another big left hook. You can't say Joey Gamach has no heart, because he certainly has taken the best shots from Julio Cesar Chavez. He was questioning his own ability to take a shot after the Nazarov fight. Which Gamach went down two times. But for Chavez looking to restore faith in his legend. As he selected oh. the perfect opponent in Gamach. Absolutely. No power and a fighter who will stand in there and trade with you. This is something Joey Gamach said he was not going to do. He's not going to stand in slug. Well, it's desperation now for Gamach. And it is Gamach who continues to throw the punches. Chavez 
Perhaps can't believe he's still standing. They're training. DeMott's still willing to trade. I think right now DeMott is just uh, cannot take his punches. Chavez is too strong, and the referee feels that he has to stop the fight. But uh, of course, DeMott has a big heart. He wants to stay in this fight, and the referee, you see, he wants to stop it, but DeMott keeps on throwing punches. And the crowd whipped into a frenzy. And his fans feel the legend has returned. Marty Denkin with a finish. And what a climax to this fight. Chavez swinging away. And the amazing courage of Joey Gamash hurt beaten, bloodied, and staying right in the face of the great Julio Cesar Chavez. And the crowd here happy for the victory of Chavez, but perhaps may have wanted to see more action like that. No complaints from Demach. No. He threw it all there at the end. Game kid, but overwhelmed by the power. Julio Cesar Chavez. There is Joey Gamache. And this is four reminders for Gamache of the Tony Lopez fight. Sure. And he now has to take a good look at where he will go in his career. Former two time world champion. Julio Cesar Chavez, one down, two to go for him to get to his goal of Oscar De La Hoya for the rematch. And Chavez came into this fight saying he had a lot to prove, trying to prove that he is still in the elite level, trying to regain the championship, trying to erase the memory of the vision of a proud champion being the bloodied loser and stopped in the fourth round which led him to depression along with the outside interferences being left by his wife and also delinquent in Texas. He has given the whole purse of one and a half million dollars to the Mexican government to try to clear that problem away. So for Julio Cesar Chavez, maybe the clean slate financially in this fight and the new slate, he said he wants a new beginning tonight. And the fans think he has it. Two more fights ahead. And then his goal to Oscar De La Hoya, the rematch, and what he hopes then is the final fight of his career. Well, Joey Gamach was game, but not enough power from him. He wanted to put some pressure on in this final round. But in doing that, he ran into a, to many of the hard shots. Julio Cesar Chavez, Gamash stayed on the inside. This is something that Joey said he was not going to do to stand and slug, but he had painted himself into a corner because I had only given him one round, that being the second. Oh, and there he takes a big right hand from Chavez. Chavez really pouring it on now. Has Gamash flailing away. Joey. Coming in toward the end of the round. Marty Dink and the referee staying close. But to see the shots of Gamash missing, the punches of Julio Cesar Chavez hitting right on the mark, just on the tip of the chin. Gamash cut in that eighth round, nose bleeding. Game, heart. 98 wins, two defeats and a draw in the 83rd knockout of the Hall of Fame career. Let's get the official time. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Marty Denkin has to call a halt to the bout. The end comes officially at the end of round number eight. The winner by knockout victory, Con Culiacan, Mexico.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing for the WBO International Featherweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with yellow, official weight, 126 pounds. As a professional, 24 victories, including 15 knockouts, two defeats, two draws. He comes to us from Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico, the WBO International Featherweight Champion, Jose El Negro. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing yellow with blue, official weight 125 pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional debut. He is a two-time Olympic gold medal champion from Odessa, Ukraine, Tommy Gospada Vasil Haitelovichenko. One second. One co one cornerman. Little bit, little bit. Center ring. Okay, gentlemen. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. You know what I expect? A clean fight. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. God bless. Touch up. Mouthpiece You know, there are many elite amateurs who have the talent to fight experienced pros or even top pros for a few rounds. The difference between amateur and professional is can you go those 10 and 12 grueling rounds. You're exactly right, because it's a whole different game when you take the headgear off and you put on smaller gloves. And we've seen some some fighters that have been able to do it. Guillermo Rindial, for example. And Lemachenko is just as decorated. But we'll see if he has a medal. Bob Arum called him this week the best amateur fighter he's ever seen. Bob Arum, like most promoters, has never been accused of understatement. <laughs> No hyperbole from Mr. Eric. He does sign our paycheck. <laughs> well, all that aside, Ramirez is an experienced professional, and we're going to find out if Lomachenko truly is an experienced professional tonight. Because you're going to have to be to beat this kid, and this kid's taking it right to him right now. Remember, uh, the kid Ramirez looks a lot shorter, but according to the official statistics, they're both 5'7". So we'll see how that works out. To me, he looks shorter. And if he is, you get a situation with headbutts. What does Lomachenko do when he gets a headbutt? And he just walked into a good left hand. Well, that's exactly. And he takes a knee. And talk he got about a, a, a body punch, I believe. Six, yeah, he did get hit with a body seven, punch. It might have been in the eight, area of the liver. The nine, way he reacted and the way he's running around. So that answered the question in hurry. Well, it certainly is a professional punch. It's not an amateur punch when you hit to the body like that. No, and clearly Lomachenko's got a lot of power to go with all that skill. Well, I, that, uh, you know, we're trying to build up Ramirez because we've seen him fight so many times, and uh, Lomachenko just made me a believer. Stop. So I don't know. I'm going to have to agree with Bob Barron until Larry, we prove him wrong. And you know, Colonel, not only is he uh, a veteran here, Ramirez, but he's also got, uh, got some pop in his punches with 15 knockouts to his 24 fights. Yeah, but you know the thing is, his punches look like they're just little pops. And this guy, Lomachenko, sitting down in his punches very heavily with his shots. Southpaw landing clean shots. His arms are supposedly the same, but something's wrong with his tail. This guy's definitely got a longer reach. He's definitely taller. I don't know who did the measuring, but I disagree with uh, all we can do is give you the official statistics as they're provided to us. And there was some nice body work, quick combinations to the body by Lomachenko. And that, I believe, is what caused Ramirez to drop to one knee earlier. And did you see the athletic move that uh, Lomachenko made? He almost squatted down, almost Stop. touched the knee to the canvas, and right back up. That's a sign of very, very, very strong legs to be able to do that a la Pernell Whitaker, who could do it with two feet and two legs. He is very athletic. Um, yeah, that's what we're finding out, Larry, in the early going. Mario referred to his uh, record. I think he had close Stop. to 400 amateur fights 
lost one of them and beat that guy who beat him twice. Wow. wow. When you mentioned his athleticism, he runs marathons, he swims in the ocean. He's extremely well conditioned. That's something he, he and his team really pride themselves on. All right, well, he won the first round anyway, 10-8. All right, you guys take a look at this knockdown. And it was a beautiful counter left hook to the body. The Here's delay, of course, is because it was right on the liver. Taking a little step back, Lemonchenko. Oh. Dipping down, coming up with a beautiful left hook to the body. Go back, go back. And it had some pop to it because Ramirez had a delayed reaction and went to one knee. When a guy has that delayed reaction, it's because it takes about a second for it to go from the liver to the brain, and then he realizes it. a lot of guys could get paralyzed. One that stands out to me was Bernard Hopkins on uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, well, and it shows that Ramirez has some professional experience, uh, along with the message to the brain. Or was I think I ought to take a rest here. Yes, that was a uh, <laughs> better and, uh, and, that, and, that's, that. and that's the hardest thing to get a fighter to do because their instinct is to fight, not really when they're in a war to go ahead and take a knee. And Colonel, since that knockdown, Ramirez has come back and has been as aggressive as ever. Took some hard shots at a combination by Lomachenko. Lomachenko, extremely elusive. Yeah, he's got it all. I mean, as I watch him, he's got the footwork. He moves side to side. He's got a lot of power uh, as the body shot shows. No. Now, here he was. That's uh, definitely, he fell over the leg. And right on top of it, uh, Russell Moore, a very good referee here from Nevada. I don't know if that was a professional move by Ramirez or an amateur Ab flop. <laughs> you know what that was? <laughs> Absolutely a professional move by Ramirez. <laughs> that was him being a little too fast for his own good and being a southpaw and getting the feet tangled there. <laughs> Can't get what they're cheering in. They're cheering Mexico. Mexico. Oh, Mexico. Very much a pro Ramirez crowd here as, as the early Marquez supporters get in their seats to watch some of this undercard action. And, and you guys are both right in that you're pointing out. This kid's fighting a hell of a fight Stop. right now. <laughs> this he's right in this thing. He's right in this thing. And, and this is a good fight for Lemonchenko as a debut. And he to just shifted to Southpaw, Lemonchenko. He is. I mean. To, to convention. Yeah. Switch it around. And those hands, aside from having some pop, those hands are really fast. This kid seems to uh, really be the five-tool player, if you will. Well, you know, just as I think he's doing, I'm like the albatross for, for poor uh, Ramirez. Just as I point out that he's doing something good, he gets nailed. You better stay away from me, young uh, Jose. I love his toughness. I love his grit. I love the fact that he's hanging in there with Clearly a guy that's got a lot, a lot of tools. 400 amateur fights, but he does fight like a professional. That was one of the things that interested Bob Arum in signing him was that he already fought with the pro-like style as an amateur. That's why Lomachenko, I said, where do you get your confidence from? Coming in wanting to fight a 10-round debut. And he said, I already fight like a pro. Because he is a pro. Well, he fought, he fought those six fights. At five. They were five-rounders. They all went the distance, by the way. It's a tournament. Right, that's a lot of experience there. Closing seconds now of round number two. And Ramirez did a good job. Mira, mira. Coming back ah. and keeping it competitive. Larry, stop picking on me with my math. <laughs> Talking I, about a guy using I his gotta bring something. Like I got to bring something to this party. <laughs> You're doing a good job. You behave yourself. We're looking at you. <laughs> No. Oh, wow. look at that. The heads no, no, came no, no, together no, no, no. there. No knockdown. Come here. Good. And, of course, no knockdown. I see that. Time. And Russell I Moore is going to say, good. okay. Watch your head. Watch your head. Let's so go. the heads came together. Another tough thing for Ramirez. And that's why I don't think that these statistics we have on these two fighters are 100% accurate. Because I saw that little short head come up against that big tall head. And they banged and clashed. Well, that'll happen often when you go up against the south ball a southpaw. Right south yeah, and it can then, especially an aggressive one. Feet get tangled, which we've seen. We've seen the head clash already. Well, of course, the other thing is they're not fighting with headgear as a professional, and heads do bang and yes. cuts do occur. It's another thing you've got to be able to uh, deal with. You got to deal with, and you got to factor it in and adjust a little bit. You notice the way Ramirez when he comes in. 
He never comes straight. It's, it's kind of like a he's zigzagging his way in, and I like that. This kid's a good fighter. And he's having a tough time with this guy, but he's the one that's forcing the fight. Lemonchenko has got some slick moves stepping past this guy. He reminds me of a, the guys that put those things into the back of a bull and they hit the bull with the side steps. Not the matter. <laughs> good clean right hand by Ramirez there. I'm impressed with Ramirez after taking such a hard body shot, maintaining his aggression, but realizing that he's got to stay on this kid if he wants any, ch any chance at winning because you're not going to outbox him. Very, very entertaining fight. I'm really enjoying this. Wherever you're watching around the world, I know you are too. A lot more coming up. Let's head to everybody in the Valley Inn down there in Christchurch, New Zealand. Georgie Calvin, the boys. Stop! You know, there is already a, a highly ranked Russian featherweight, Pradovich, uh, unbeaten fighter also. He's a real world leader, isn't he? And there's another really talented, deep talented uh, division with Mikey Garcia and, and Abner Mares and Johnny Gonzalez. And Chenko could really have some exciting fights out. And the footwork of Lemonchenko. Stop! No, 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 no. Watch your hold. Let's go. Well, I love his footwork, Mario, that you bring it out. It's terrific. Closing seconds now. And he always seems to be on balance. Yeah. Swear to love, swear yeah. To love. Except for the one time he was thrown down by. Uh, All right, the bell ends round number three as we go to round four here. Thomas and Max Center. We're in the United States of America in a place called Las Vegas, Nevada. Glad that you can be with us. The Colonel, Larry, Mario, Christina. And our principals in this, Jose and Vasily. We're, We're on first name basis here. Vasily looks like he could let his hands go and really, really put on much more of a show and be a lot more aggressive because he clearly has the advantage in speed and I think strength, but he's Choosing to counter punch, use his footwork, and maybe get some rounds in. Maybe Ramirez is a tougher, tougher kid to figure out than we think. Doing a good job with his jab. Uses his shoulders. Typical of a Mexican fighter. Use whatever you got. They use head, shoulders, knees, low blows. They're just tough, flat out tough. And when things aren't going his way, like they aren't right now, they get tough. You have to think the, like, the longer this fight goes, obviously Ramirez with 28 professional fights has been in deep waters, has been in late rounds, but Lomachenko, this is going to be his first 10 rounder. Well, like you mentioned, Christina, he's in excellent shape, so I don't think conditioning is going to be an, an issue, but mentally, it's a whole other thing. Absolutely. Nice counter right hook. If, silly. if you may have just been joining us because many countries join us at different times throughout these telecasts and these world Stop. telecasts, Christina Puncher made a great point that this kid, he cross trains, he's a swimmer, he's a distance runner, a marathoner, uh, besides all his boxing that he does, he's got the uh, washboard stomach and the uh, strong shoulders and striated muscles in his upper arm, so this kid has got a perfect build. Uh, for a fighter, and that's because of all the training that he does and the different aspects of cross training for boxing. And his family, nice, beautiful, his family, who clearly fitness is a top priority in the Lemonchenko house. And while the Klitschkos aren't that popular, one thing you got to say about them, you may not like this style, but by golly, they're in shape all the time. Phenomenal shape. Meanwhile, Lemonchenko's got a little bit of a mouse and a cut, I believe, under his right eye. Well, we see how that holds up because a cut uh, can be a real serious problem because the Mexican will know how to go after it. I assure you. Stop! Joey Gamash is handling the cuts for Lomachenko. Well, it is a little bit of a mouse and hasn't, blood isn't pouring from it, but uh, one more shot there and uh, he might see blood. I don't know if he's seen it. And another beautiful body shot 
Those body shots are unbelievable. Four, it's up to four five, and five. He six, may not be able to get up. Seven, it's up to six, eight, seven, eight, nine, okay. and ten. He counts them out. It's all it's over. A knockout. How about that? Like a bolt out of the blue. He hit the midsection right on the lever, and it's over. What was so impressive about that, too, Colonel, is he didn't even plant his feet. It was a counter shot as he was pivoting, and he got it, and he got him right on the liver, the same shot that he dropped him with earlier, but this time there was no delayed reaction. Out. Because, of his, because of his quickness. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 59 seconds of round number 4. The winner by knockout victory, winning his professional debut, and winning the WBO International Featherweight Championship, the fighting pride of Odessa, Tommy Gaspada, the Seal. This is the moment we've all been waiting for as Bob Barrams, Top Rank Incorporated, Zanford Promotions, and Marquez Boxing proudly present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO. Welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Tecate Con Character, Wingstop, the wing experts, and Value Casa de Bolsa. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Bill Brady, Executive Director Keith Geyser, WBO President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. At ringside, the three judges scoring on the 10-point system will be Glenn Feldman, Robert Hoyle, and Patricia Morse Jarman. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, veteran world championship referee Robert Bird. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance, and courtesy of HBO pay-per-view, the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner with his head trainer, Nacho Berenstein. Officially weighing in at 144 and one half pounds and wearing black with red and green. His professional record, Hall of Fame credentials, 55 victories, including 40 knockouts, six defeats, and one draw. He's the former featherweight, former super featherweight, former lightweight, former super lightweight champion of the world. Thomas and Caballeros de Ciudad de Mexico, el legendario campeón mexicano, Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez. And 
fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Joel Diaz, wearing camouflage and officially weighing in at 146 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one, consisting of 30 fights, 30 victories, including 12 knockouts, and he has captured two world titles. From Palm Springs, California, USA, the former light rollerweight champion of the world, reigning, defending, undefeated WBO rollerweight champion of the world, Timothy Desert Storm. Rules, unified rules of boxing, 10-point must scoring system, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, but it cannot be saved the bell in any round. Gentlemen. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case of an accidental foul, we go to the scorecards after four. So the stage is set, we're ready to go. I got my seat belt on, the goosebumps are up in the back of my neck, my head's standing straight up. I'm ready for world championship fight, and it doesn't get any better than this. Either one of these fine tune machines can win this. And Let's it should be sensational. And it was very Same. respectful leading up to this fight, Kramer. But I think that all goes out the window once the bell rings with these two. These guys are both gentlemen outside the ring, and they're both animals in the ring. And yes, we are. You mentioned one thing, Christina, very important. The calmness of Tim Bradley. He must maintain his equanimity. Both guys with dark trunks, you know the fighters. So the one with the yellow on it is Tim Bradley. It actually is a TV on his trunks. Tim Bradley, Desert Storm in the middle. And of course, Juan Manuel Marquez with a white trim on his black trunks with Tecate across the front. I think one of the first questions is, how long is it going to take before Marquez tries to test the chin of Bradley? I don't think it's going to take long, Larry, but we're going to find out very shortly, I think. I mean, even more than usual in a fight because of what happened in that Provindikov fight to Bradley. It's a very good point, Larry. And Marquez, who, as you pointed out, started out, I believe, as a junior featherweight, really has a lot of pop in his punches now that he's a welterweight. Tim has got perfect distance. His timing is perfect. Marquez with his wide shots, a little bit slow with them. And Tim able to block him in the back of his glove so far. Tim came out popping that jab, has since laid back and he's studying Marquez. Both fighters sizing each other up in round one. It'll be interesting to see who's the aggressor in this fight. Well, that's true, Christina, because if Tim Bradley becomes the aggressor, he's going to be in trouble. He yeah, cannot be sucked into a brawl. They're both natural counterpunches. So we can have some version and variation of what we're looking at right now for rounds and rounds. And that'll be hard to, to score <laughs> if it stays like this. Well, let's hope not. Well, Bradley is beating uh, Marquez to the punch here, but Marquez, you know, his mind is going at 110% to try to set something up. He's tried a couple of lead left hooks. Bradley's buck blocked them pretty well. And that's a beautiful vintage uppercut by Marquez. A lead uppercut that he so successfully lands. And there he tries it again. And it worked. It didn't catch him flush, but it worked. Bradley, as soon as he had hit, the warrior comes out there. You notice he didn't take a step back. He took a step in after he got hit. He didn't, Colonel. And that, and there's another big left hook. And he's caught him a couple times with the uppercut and the hook so far there. And he also hit him with his head, you know. That's important, Larry, because there's an inch height difference here in well, favor of... Bradley uh, was notorious for using his head physically in fights up he, until recent fights. Yeah, well, he'll use it tonight because he has to when you're fighting a tough Mexican-style fighter. He'll use it for sure. And it, a prominent head that is. That's a, that's a rather large head that Bradley has. You know, no matter how Marquez has built up his body, which he has, you can see that Bradley is a naturally bigger man. Very good point. And naturally quicker. It's the bell ending round one. That's a Bradley round. I have it on Marquez round. Well, that's what I expect the judges will be split on that too. And that's why it could be controversial at the end. I thought the leader punches were landed by Marquez, a couple of the uppercuts and the hooks. I'll give you the uppercuts. 
okay? Don't let them establish that uppercut. You got this? You got, you got, stay, you got stay smart. You got but when you have rounds like that, you, and that's why it can be so controversial. Right I'm glad we see it differently, Mario, and I'll tell you why. Because I expect that's the way the judges will be. They're not, I guarantee you all three judges don't have it the same way. What's the expression that John would say, say open, don't confuse can he, can he um, aggression for effectiveness or something along those lines? Effective aggression is a factor in scoring. But when one fighter is the aggressor or throws a lot more punches, he will often get credit for the, for a, the close closer rounds. rounds. A little swelling on the forehead of Marquez due to the headbutts. All right, this is round number two. Colonel Bob Sheridan. We've got uh, Larry Merchant, Mario Lopez, and Christina Pancha alongside. Glad to be working with all of these true sensational professionals. And four, the two quick, four jabs in succession. Four jabs in them. a row. The two professionals in the ring are truly professionals as well. Timothy Bradley and, of course, Juan Manuel Marquez. Timothy Bradley coming up, popping those jabs, and landing a nice left hook to start the second round. Giving him more of that uh, left shoulder. Dips, blast to the liver. Giving him different looks. Oh, right. Right. Coming out a lot more aggressive in this round to start than he did the first. And the final hold for that liver shot again. Low punch. Being warned. One thing that's great about a low punch, Larry, it may not count in terms of the referee. But it certainly counts in the body of your opponent. And now we know how you fight, Chris. I'm a dirty fighter. <laughs> Tim's corner yelling, stay on the plan. Stay on the plan. Something he did not do in his last fight. But Joel Diaz has, is a mastermind and, and really has come up with a plan. We'll see what it is, but it, they're, they're yelling well, that over ultimate, and over. Ultimately, it's the fighter who has to decide. Absolutely. Bradley seemed a little more comfortable in there. Yeah, you're right, Mary. I noticed that too. He's very, very relaxed. Of course, Juan Manuel Marquez has been to the well so many times. He knows what this is all about. For him, nice foot movement for the 40-year-old guy. Up on his toes, able to bounce away from the quick and elusive, slick punching and slick moving Timothy Bradley. Marquez is being disciplined to remain the kind of puncher. And Good left nice hook for Bradley. Minute to go. Second round, Thomas and Mack loaded up the right, didn't quite connect. Timothy Bradley setting up right in front of him. Don't like that. Now he gets his angle. You don't want to come straight in to Marquez. We talked about him being a counter puncher. And you're right, Mario, he's one of the best. He got ripped to the body that time by Tim coming in. Another difficult round to score. I don't think it is. I think Bradley's Bradley. winning this clean. Oh, I'm giving it to Bradley. I agree, Marquez seems a little gun shy to me in there right now. He's, he, you know, you get the feeling that he's, he's trying to set something up, yes. trying to define what is he doing, where can I get him? It's working for now. He got in the ball. Closing seconds. Tim Brown. Tim won the round. I think he's won two. Tim won that round for sure. And if the end of the second is any indication to the way the third's going to start, things are going to get interesting. Really? But you know what it's all about? No matter what they say in the corner, these fighters are fighters. And it's instinct. And when they get hit, they're coming back. No matter what they do in the gym, no matter how much they put them in the these guys are warriors first. Both of them. Here's a Bradley shot with a nice right hand over the top. End of the round, both the gentlemen in the corner. Bradley coming with a looping overhand right. And both letting the leather fly. Bradley closing out what I thought was a big round for him. I scored in that last flurry. Bradley two to nothing over Marquez. He landed two good shots. Here we go, round number three. Thomas and Max in Las Vegas, Nevada. The WBO Welterweight Championship of the World on the line. Timothy Bradley with the yellow trim on his black and the red trim on his black trunks is, of course, multi-champion, multi-divisional champion, Juan Manuel Marquez. 
pretty even. We all thought Bradley took the first, uh, the second round, and we were too close to call in the first. It seems to me, Bradley coming in with those looping punches and his head leaning forward, Marquez will eventually time him and counter him. But is this an older Marquez that can't pull the trigger to do that? Remains to be seen. Well, I think it is. Because I see his punches very wide. I see his punches looping. The, his only hope is to get this guy into a very, very big brawl. This is a championship records. Bradley's 8-0 in championship fights. And Marquez is 9-4-1 in world championship Just fights. Remember, we, we think of Marquez, obviously, because of his fights with Pacquiao. But Pacquiao was a good matchup for him in yes. the sense that Played into his he, he was coming forward. He was always looking to land big punches. And Marquez could play off that. On paper, Bradley is a tough style. But we've seen Bradley change it up as of late. And as we've discussed earlier, if he bites down on that mouthpiece and chooses to exchange, then, then that's when he can get into trouble. Well, he's on the bit to intelligence tonight because I think he's fighting a perfect fight. He's hitting him more in this round, too. Clean his shots. Continues to circle to his left, but he bounces back to his right. Stops, plants. Anything but straightforward. And that's the way to beat Marquez. At what point, too, gentlemen, does Marquez change his game, game plan and become a little more aggressive? Well, that would be out of character. He may have to, but that's not how he's fought. Tim McTinch head was rolling. There's nothing on that punch. But in the seats so far, they get really excited. You got to remember, anything that Marquez does, the crowd will cheer because it's about 80% Mexican fans in attendance tonight. That's being generous. Saying, it, 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 that's being, it, I think it's like 90%. <laughs> that's not being generous, excuse me. Conservative. Conservative, excuse me. Yes, exactly. No, I'm definitely a conservative. <laughs> In every way. My man James Cowell doesn't particularly agree with me, but neither does his wife agree with him. Marquez sort of waiting. He's a counter puncher, as you know. Larry's pointed that out, but it's not likely he'll change. Tim makes a miss again. Beautifully slips the punch. He's rolling with the punches. It looks like he's getting hit, but he's rolling with them pretty well. Still ends. That to me is a definite Bradley round. Nice counter left hook, right hand combination from Marquez. One of the highlights for him in that round. Another right hand that Bradley was sort of rolling with, but not a lot of contact. Showing some Marquez highlights, but real tough round to score for Marquez. All right, we're set to go just about round number four. Sean Monahan, Vasily Lemachenko, Orlando Salido, all knockout winners tonight. This one getting more interesting by the round. This is round four. Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Larry Merchant. Glad that you're going to be with us. Mario Lopez and Christina Puncher with us as well. Wow, with the punch, a little frustration by Marquez. Or is he a little too old to land accurate punches, which is what I believe. I'm starting to feel the same way, Colonel. Don't forget one thing. We talked about it before, Mario. This man is an absolute warrior. And great champions like him could do things that other guys can't. No doubt about so it. So don't be surprised, you know, if he comes back and lands some shots. But I don't think his timing is good tonight. I think his shots are too wide. I think he slowed down with his arm speed. I think Tim could just outbox him like this all night. Could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Arm shot. And a little desperation Stop. there. Yes. Trying to compensate. All right, let's see what this is all about. Time has been called. I think some Vaseline. He's got a ton of Vaseline on his head. Wipe that forehead. off his body. Wipe on his body. Vaseline on the body. I don't know that I've it ever seen that. probably just fell. That. I think that's, it just fell that's from the That's not your power unless it fell like Christina says. Pedro oh, Adam used to do that. On the body? Yeah, and try to get it on the other guy's gloves. <laughs> well, if, if, if you pull it off, it'll help. Well, you try it. You get caught, you get caught. They're going to find right. you. Round four. 
why I love the referees What's for the up, Nevada up, State up. Athletic Commission, because they pick up things like that that would go missed. I'm not talking about New York and Miami and, the best and, 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 uh, and uh, Los Angeles, but basically those are your places where you get great, great referees in New Jersey as well. Stiff jab there. Not quite the war the pier section we expected, but that's all in favor of Tim. He's the ring general. He's dictating that. About a minute to go in the fourth stop. round. As far as I'm concerned, it's all Bradley. Well, this is, to me, why Bradley's a polarizing figure. Because he's doing what he's got to do to win, yet somehow it doesn't win over the public and clamor to want to see a Bradley fight when he fights like this. Would you rather take the Klitschko's money and fame? Or would you want to listen to him get into brawls and please the public? Well, but, but, you know, that's a, a, a issue here because certainly Marquez is not fighting any more aggressively than than uh, Bradley is. He's fighting his style of fight, counter-puncher fight, style of fight. Um, and Bradley is mostly beating to the punch. You know, one of the surprises I have is how gray the beard, the little beard is on Marquez. Yes, it's you're right. It's all like Vaseline, actually. It's, <laughs> it's a combination it of gray is. hair and Vaseline. <laughs> oh, it's the Vaseline. Mix it up a little bit. But not much happened there, in all honesty. Another nice exchange. Tim landed the left hand with the right one up behind the ear. And the mathematics you have to have to manipulate the books in the Street Federal. You that's better a, be a mathematician. That's a skill. Well, then I think it's safe to assume the money he's made, he's probably invested well. <laughs> or he knows how much he has. That's well, right. now he's, he, he's more like a Wall Streeter. Right. If you give me an accountant for the government <laughs> in Distrito Federal, you're a genius. All right. I won't see any more because the Mexicans will attack me when I get down there next week. Meanwhile, Bradley came out popping that jab again. Looking in fantastic shape as usual. This is round five. The chair Mexico, Mexico goes up, reaches downstairs. Tim's got that washboard stomach and a light blow to the body will not hurt him. Stiff jab to the forehead of Marquez. Another regular landed on the forehead of Marquez. That's why they're loading up the grease. Nacho knows what he's doing over there in that corner. We haven't seen that flush uppercut that Marquez landed so beautifully in the first round. And, I'm, and since then, I haven't given him a round. You know, we're all sort of warrior aficionados. You know, if I'm fighting now at this stage and it's going this way, I almost have to engage. I know that isn't what Tim wants to do. It's certainly not what he Good hard job his corner wants to do. But these guys are fighters. I think he's going to go after him soon. At least I would. No, I think Bradley wants to win the fight. Oh, no question, Larry. Un unlike, he has nothing, you know. He just hit him with one hellacious left hook. So you're right. If he continues to just pop and pick and land left hooks like he just landed, eventually this guy's going to wilt and he'll stop it. Because this is not the Marquez that I've seen well, yeah, over way, the years. In a way, it's a war of nerves. Who can make the other guy get out of his more natural style first? Well, that's true. You know, that's what goes with what I was saying, Larry. You know, but Tim, maybe it's just that I'm so excited about this fight, I want to see him mix it up. But if I'm Tim, it's very hard, and it takes great discipline to do what he's doing now, but it's tremendously successful. Well, to me, guys with similar styles, usually it's going to favor the younger, quicker, faster guy, and in this case, it's Bradley, and that's been the case so far tonight. Oh, this is his fight all the way. Mario, as long as he can hit you to fight like this, this is perfect for him. And don't get sucked into what I suggested that I thought he might do. Look at this. Pop the jab, pop the jab. Other guy's slow, he's missing. This is an aged version of the guy who was once a tremendous sensational fighter. I'm With glad it. that we get to see him one more time. Just with Marquez's power, too, which is so hard to count him out. We sit here on the edge of our seat as, as Bradley's controlling these rounds, but at any moment, as we saw Marquez's last fight, it could change. How quickly we saw in a round near this one. Downstairs it goes. Tim throws with it. Now Marquez opens up. They trade Tim. Whoa! At the end, he's taunted him. He's taunted him. He's taunted him. 
end of the round. Both fighters taunting each other. Marquez really committing to the taunt. I think a lot of frustration. That body, body shot landed, by the way, from Marquez, causing Bradley to really want to open up. And I think, gentlemen, in this next round, Marquez needs to revert to plan B. Well, his plan B is I got to draw this guy into a brawl because I can't beat him boxing. And he's not, and he won't. So let's see if he can drag Tim into a brawl. If Tim engages, it's a mistake. But he's a fighter, so it could happen. And I personally would love to see it happen. Tim goes hunting with that left jab. Squared up a bit is Marquez looking to throw his right hand, but it's wide as it's been all night. Tim in and out, in and out. The old Angelo Dundee style of hit, and don't get hit. And moving his head very well very as he well. moves out. Tim rolling and throwing that right hand and turning a home. Hasn't landed as many as he did in the last round at this stage. Good lead right hand. Finally landed. Marquez. Through five punches, they all missed. Colonel, but I think you're right. I think he'll have his moment to you know, catch a, a punch here and there, or a land a blow, I should say. But this is an older Marquez we're looking at. I think so, because I've seen this guy perform, and, and all of us have, at such a level. And this is what I'm seeing out of him. Uh, uh, right now. Again, it's the opponent, and recall that I said earlier yeah, you're right, man. that an older fighter can conceal his aging, but a younger fighter will come along who exposes it. Whether this can ha go on for 12 rounds is what we're here to find out. I'm more concerned about the beating that he took in the last fight as opposed to the dramatic knockout that he landed. And I think that affected him more. Sure, it was great that he knocked him out in the, what they call it, the shutter around the world. But in reality, his body can't take many more beatings like he took for the first few rounds of that fight. And I think it shows tonight, for the very first time, I see this guy will. Right, and 40 years old. There you go! show. Yeah, and Mario, there's a long way to go. We're only approaching the middle of this fight. And in every interview we did this week, he talked about how much they worked on his speed with Marquez, but I'm not seeing any of that speed thus far in the fight, guys. He doesn't have the timing, Larry. You know, his mind is there, but he can't pull the trigger. Well, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson famously said that you know you're getting older when you see the openings before you punch at them. When they're in their prime, they're punching as the openings develop. And there's another big counter right hand that Bradley's had success with all night. See, Larry, you pointed out another thing, too, that's so true. Tim is doing a great job moving the head, never coming straight in. Gets the angle. He stops, works his way back out, pulls out at an angle, sets up in front of him now. Closing seconds of the sixth round. Marquez wants to try to catch him. He's been successful, you know, in the last couple of seconds. Of round. That ends the six against two legendary fighters. Anything that Marquez does, you might pick up around here and there. Okay, he's by all means not overwhelming him. He'll he'll catch a a shot here and there like he did with that overhand right that we just saw, and Marquez happened to catch him with a right, but neither fighter really landing lots of combinations or doing any serious damage you know, thus far. And, and Marquez as yet has been able to test Bradley's chin. Very good point, Larry. That was one of the things we wondered about going into this fight. How could he take a punch after that concussions he took in his last fight? And of course, that was at the hands of Provednikov. We're going to see him in action next week. So we'll evaluate his progress against Alvarado in a place called Denver, Colorado in the United States of America. And that's going to be two men in their prime the potential barn burner. Mean, meanwhile, we have a bit more of a chess match here as opposed to the barn burner we were hoping to see. Yeah, and as far as that chess match goes, as, as much as we've given a, or we've scored a lot of these rounds for Bradley, they are still fairly close. It's not like he's won them by a huge margin. It's not like they're dominating rounds. So you never know with the way the crowd goes into play how closely they have them 
Score. Well, you know, uh, this is an interesting graphic we got up there for you. Knockouts after round six. Marquez, 18. Bradley, one. Wait a minute, that's a 19. 19, rather, and that is telling, and I think that's more to the experience of Marquez, of course. It's the conditioning. This. Mario, sorry. It's the conditioning of a younger Marquez. Yes. This isn't the Marquez that did that. And don't forget, he is a warrior, and he's going to test him. He's frustrated right now. He he's, wants them to mix it up and brawl with him. He's starting to move forward gradually, trying to test the ground between them, see if he can find someplace comfortable a little closer. Tim is beautiful, though. In and out, in and out. Wow, with that shot. He took the shot. Look at the job he does defensively. Yeah, he's underrated as defensively. You're right about that. He made Pacquiao miss a lot. That too. was the that was the punch heard around the world when it landed on Manny Pacquiao's jaw, the one that just missed. That straight, big right hand. Windmilling. But you know something, Larry? That punch to me doesn't look as crisp, but look pretty dramatic. But I don't know how much is left on his punches. See, he's missing, missing. That's an indication to me that the, you you had the best line. It was a fighter that said, you know, your mind's there, your brain tells you, and you see it a second later, something of that nature. Somebody named uh, Robinson. Yes, <laughs> yes, Sugar Ray Robinson. And could there be something except for the fact that after such a high and in, in such dramatic fashion with that knockout, do you think he got up for a Bradley post Pacquiao? A well, you can, you can say for both of them, but I think your point is a point. Uh, but we know how hard he trains uh, and how professional Marquez is. Remember, it's still a 40-year-old body that has been in 60 wars. That's a lot. For Pacquiao, I'm sorry, for Bradley, he didn't want to go to China to fight Pacquiao. And maybe not open up that story anymore. All right, here we go, round eight. Bradley with his back to you. That's Juan Manuel Marquez stopping up, as I've said a couple of times in Las Vegas, to pick up a paycheck and thumb his way up to Canastota, New York, where he'll go into the Hall of Fame five years after he quits fighting. Good right hand, a quick little right hand by Bradley. And he's been pot shot like this most of the evening. And again, Juan Manuel, it's just not there. The timing isn't quite there. Punches a little bit wide. But he's an experienced old pro. Oh. And, if you, and if you don't believe me, ask yeah. Michael Moore about an old pro. Well, you, you were almost reading my mind. Because what happened, we're talking about George Foreman and uh, um, Michael Moore. Moore. When he around. And what George did was trap him. He was setting a trap to land that big punch. So now you have to start thinking in terms of, is Marquez capable of setting a trap and changing the course of the fight with one punch. Well, I think he is capable of it. I mean, mind-wise, but I don't know if he's able to do it physically. You know, with George, is different because George throws clubbing punches at a heavyweight his size. The last thing to go is the punch. And George would one punch could stop anybody. And he has to create the opportunity, and Bradley's not giving him the opportunity to create it. Well, we don't, we, don't, we don't see some consistent pattern. He's changed up. He can't, he, you know, he he's admitted, Marquez, that he saw a tell from Pacquiao that unleashed that big punch. He hasn't been able to find the tell yet. This is a tough puzzle to, to figure out. He get caught with a light left hand on the inside. Tim went right back, stepped outside, regrouped. Now he's almost inviting Marquez to come in because there's a frustration for Marquez here now. This great champion does not want to look bad. And, and he doesn't look great. You know, I was mentioning earlier, I, I, it was hard for me to define him. Is he a boxer? Is he a brawler? But what, what he is is sort of awkward to his benefit. Yeah. He is hard to figure he out. He is an unorthodox, athletic, smart. Um, he's all of those things, and, that's, and, and because of that, it's effective. Marquez looks a little bit frustrated, like he's not able to, to land the shots. He's thinking about it. 
Well, Looks one... like he's getting frustrated in there. You're right. You're right, Dickerson. He's very frustrated. Therefore, he's going after him. Tim decided that he would crawl for a couple of seconds. It's okay. Marquez maybe had a better round, but not enough. Hey. That's a Bradley round, too. We're getting to the point where Marquez is going to need a knockout. Or not, something dramatic. Or something dramatic. Watch Marquez. He has some success. Nice straight right hand. Another look. Nice straight right hand. Marquez has had his moments, but they're few and far between. And Brad I get Bradley pitching a shutout, 80-72. Glenn Feldman, Robin Hoyle, and Patricia Morse German are doing the official scoring. My scoring is almost always in line with Robin Hoyle's. Round nine, Thomas and Mack. Juan Manuel Marquez, future Hall of Famer. Tim Bradley, the book hasn't been finished yet, but he's undefeated at 30 and 0. And he's got this guy figured out tonight. It's a nice left hook by Marquez. Not enough to hurt Bradley. But you see, Marquez is now knows the game, and he's moving forward. Marquez is out of his game now. He's not counterpunching Larry because he's lost every round. His corner knows it. He's got to go on the assault. He has the CBA, and whether he can catch him or not, I don't know. But that's what the last four rounds are all about. He's got to step, stop waiting for something to happen. He's got to make something happen. Well, he needs to step out of his comfort zone and be the aggressor and let his hands go if he has any intention of wanting to be victorious at this point, in my opinion. Well, he's trying to, I think, Mario. Jab, hook. Actually, his punches look as crisp now as at any time in the fight. I see him with a little more hand speed. Maybe it's an adrenaline flow. I don't know what it is. It can't be experience. Experience isn't going to give you quickness. But he's got something now that he didn't have three or four rounds ago. Uh, he's not feeling him out. He now knows that he has to make these things count. He has to make everything count. By the way, we just passed, since we're in Las Vegas, the over and under on the betting line, which was nine and a half. This is Marquez's best round since the first round, I feel. And no question it is. But this is a different Marquez than his arms that doing all that feeling out earlier and strictly counterpunching. He's frustrated and he's after Tim. Great thing that Tim's doing is not getting sucked into the wall. All he has to do is box. Barely missing with that uppercut. He's thrown some malicious punches, and he missed them, or Tim rolls with him. So he hasn't hurt Tim at all. Neither fight it down. Neither fight it shaken. Nobody bloody. Confidence on the face of Marquez. Tim hasn't been touched virtually, and the fight continues. Marquez being aggressive here in the ninth round. A nice uppercut. There it is again, and a nice hurt by Marquez. This is definitely his best round of the fight. He a nice right hand. He hurt him. He hurt Tim. His legs are a little loose in the knees. Tim is in such great shape. He's he's got the fight, gentlemen. Late. There's a nice exchange by Marquez. Nice stiff left jab. End of the round with a body shot. The uppercut and the hook were working for. Marquez in that fight. Hey, remember, he's gonna try he changed to stay, his game stay plan. His own because we got three rounds the fight. to go. Okay, Marquez so can only attack. So you're gonna have to be a little bit more technical on this shit. Off, but that's it's his hey. only shot. They're making that Tim cannot remember. get sucked into okay? a brawl. You have to make adjustments. Okay, big, 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 and stay low. When he comes in, you stay inside. Stay up the road. Tight defense. Diaz telling Bradley to shuffle with the combinations inside and get out of there. Good advice. Or can he make Marquez pay for this new aggression? That's what it's all about as we go to 10. All right, these championship rounds. All those punches missed by Tim Bradley. Nothing landed or thrown yet by Marquez. 
chance of Mexico from the crowd. They saw some life in Marquez in this light, this last round. And we're going to see if it's the start of something new. He's got to drop him, or he's got to hurt him, or he can't win this fight. But I thought he staggered him just a hair, just a bit, at the tail end of the last round. But Tim is in such magnificent shape at 30 years old, as opposed to 40 years old, that all his brain cells are clicking right on the money. Big left hook from Marquez, barely missing. Marquez's left eye is sort of a little semi-closed. There's the ground, you want. Here he comes. He nails him. Marquez, I thought he was off balance and maybe would go down, but it was more a balance situation. Nice recovery by Marquez, but he got nailed. Hey, Marquez is a little surprised that Bradley came back at him instead of trying to avoid him. And let's hope we see a few more exchanges like that. I thought Marquez still landed a couple shots there. Bradley answered, though. Marquez has definitely landed some maybe more shots. But I think the shot that Bradley landed hurt him. Don't know that for a fact because he didn't go down. Just the feeling I have. Marquez stalking, trying to still counter punch. Tim bending way over so he really can't do anything but hit his back at the top of his head. You can be knocked out on the top of your head you if you want to break your hand. And I'm surprised Marquez hasn't adjusted a little bit and gone for the uppercut a little bit more with the bobbing and weaving. Taking a step back from that beautiful uppercut of his. I just don't think at this age, in this stage of his career, that he can execute like he one time could. Oh, the heart's there. You can see the skills. You can see the courage. But I don't see the electricity. That was a decent right hand that he almost landed. But he's almost landed a lot of shots. Well, I agree, but I think he's been busy enough to still maybe escape with this round. You might get it. I wouldn't fight with you, Mario, over this one. Caught Bradley bending over with the right uppercut that time. And based on that, I'm giving Marquez this round. Slip, of course. That's a slip because if there's a punch slip. and the hands were down, that's a knockdown. I've got 98-92 going to the real championship rounds now as you look at this replay. Both fighters landing big left hooks. Bradley going, showing good sportsmanship when Marquez going down, not hitting. Boy, I'm getting gassed now, watching these two guys work this hard. This is round 11, it's championship time. And the great multiple division and multiple time champion, Juan Manuel Marquez, pull this out against the reigning champ, Tim Bradley. Now, these have been very close rounds, and we discussed that the judges may have been seeing it in different ways, too. So these next two rounds really, really could determine the outcome of the fight. They're very, by the way, because I have it 98-92, doesn't mean the judges don't have it even the other way, because there have been enough close rounds. Remember, our scoring is unofficial. We're just trying to give you an indication of what we think the judges might be doing. Christina just showed me some scores from Press Row. Kevin Ayo from Kevin Ioli from, from from Yahoo. Yeah, from Yahoo and Dan Rafael from ESPN Sports have it 96 94 Bradley. Yeah, so they have it a little closer, but like we said, me. yeah. These but rounds. they're talking to each other. Back there in <laughs> press row. No, they they shoot the breeze back and forth. Yeah, I respect these judges. Their, I respect their, their views. I do too. I absolutely do the best journalists in the world. I sit down with Dan Raphael before every fight. And Kevin Ioli and I sit in the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame together, so I respect him a lot. And that's why I said it wouldn't surprise me if it were even or the other way. It doesn't surprise me. This is the way I see it. And I'm not backing up on it. Marquez definitely being the more aggressive one in this round. And he's winning this round too, Mario, halfway through it. But again, Two rounds ago, he left his fight plan and made a big adjustment. 
but he hasn't been able to catch Tim with a big shot. He hasn't, but Bradley has slowed down, and he has stuck to his game plan, but hasn't been as active. But for Tim, it's been a fast-paced situation, moving in and out, making sure he's not caught, picking when he goes in, side to side, a lot of movement, where the other guys had to try and cut him off all the time, try and catch up with him, and counter him early. Bradley doesn't look great right now, I'll tell you. He actually looks a little winded. The mouth is a little open, and maybe it's being on his bicycle all night, but a young Marquez would make, would make this really interesting right now, but does he have enough in the tank to maybe close it out strong these next couple rounds? A round and a half, rather. Twenty seconds to go. The Mexico chance go up. Obviously, they believe, as does Dan Raphael and Kevin Ioli, that that man is ahead. We'll find out. As he's one thing for sure, Marquez won that round. So he's won three in a row. That means the other two guys have got him up by three rounds, Mario. No, they, they had Bradley winning by two rounds. Oh, they they had Bradley round up. Is. No, they no, had Bradley, Bradley up, but just a little that's closer. But they, they, right. it seems that most Take people have Bradley winning via social media, but of course the judges are not on social media. And the other thing is people are afraid to commit. I'm not. I have more experience than every judge in this building. I've judged over 10,000 fights. And tonight, this is my 949th world title fight. I'll put my scoring up against anybody. I'm a certified ABC judge. I'm a certified WBO judge and a certified WBC judge. So I don't care what they say. My score is right. May not agree with the rest of them, but I don't back up. You, sir, I agree with 100%. You are a certified right guy. <laughs> a certified white guy? Right guy. Oh, right guy. Both, actually. All right, this is it, the 12th round. This is what we came for. I have Marquez meeting a knockout or at least a knockdown to end with a draw. I get a 107, 102. He'd have to knock him out of my score sheet or knock him down a couple of times. Tim is too smart for that this time around, I think. But it's not the nature of a fight of the coach. Let's see if he engages. Fourth and final round. Las Vegas, Nevada. WBO, welterweight championship of the world on the line. Yeah. Is there one more great night for one great champion in history, Juan Manuel Marquez? Uh, I'm thinking of two younger fighters in which the younger fighter thought he had the fight wrapped up and he didn't try to win the last round and wound up losing the fight. And that was Delahoy in terms of that. Yes. Right? Um, Great and, example, Larry. And Gil Clancy told me that it was the greatest mistake of his life not to tell him to go out to win the last round. And, and Bradley has been trying to defend his title rather than to win it in these last rounds. Get hooked again. Marquez on the assault, trying to catch him halfway through the last round. Tim needs to put his hands up. Bradley is giving this round away. Could be a mistake. We've seen strange things happening in boxing scoring recently. Let's hope this isn't the case tonight. And it's a mistake if he wants to win the fans' approval, which he so desperately seeks, well, or so that he, he says. Feels, he feels he did that against Providnikov, and he just wants to win this one. He hasn't shown any excessive testosterone tonight. Yeah, he's stuck to the game plan very well. <laughs> he's done that great, Christina. Absolutely right. 58 seconds to go. Put your ears back, son. Let it fly. Go after him. Don't let him take it away from you in case the judges have it a whole lot closer than we right. do. And Marquez is winning this round, but it's not too late, Timothy. Go after him. Because I'll tell you this, Marquez doesn't have the same power in this round that Provednikov had in the final round of their fight. I guarantee you that, folks. No, that's for a fact. And Provitnikov was letting his hands go, and he was a busy fighter, and he was overwhelming Bradley. That see, hasn't been the case tonight. See, Mario, he's got all the right intentions, but he's still missing. See that? Yeah. 
He hasn't landed one of those big haymakers, even partially. 15 seconds to go. He's had his moments, and I still think he's done enough to win this round. But All right, here they go. Out. It crossed him, and he almost dropped him. How about that? Don't put your hands down. He almost dropped him. Will that punch win him the round? I give it to him. And the fight. I still give Marquez that, that round, punch. Larry. It was the only hard telling punch in an entire fight. Do you give him the round on that? I still think he did enough work in this round. It was effective in the corners for Marquez to get the round. However, not the fight. Well, I agree with both of you. Number one, I think that Bradley should get the round because he hurt Marquez. And everything that Marquez did the whole round, he didn't hurt him once. He was Did more he aggressive. hurt him? Was he a little off balance? Oh, no, uh, he, he hurt was him. hurt. He Definitely. was hurt. Well, we'll and here's the, the, here's the exchange here. You'll see. You want me to go up? Oh, he hurt him. Marty? He almost dropped him. Marty? Wow. Almost dropped him. How those 40-year-old legs held up is beyond me. They That's held a credit up. to a great, great former champion. I get a 117, 111. Mario, what do you got? I have Marquez with getting five rounds. And I have not done my math because I was looking at the... And at this <laughs> stage, I can't figure it out. But I get him winning one, two, three. I get him winning three rounds. And then you added the 12th and the 1st. So you get closer than I am. Yeah, I, added, I did have it closer. Very well, than. maybe right. Five rounds for Marquez. What did you have, Christina? Well, I'm by far the least qualified person to be judging fights at this table, but I, it was really hard for me to score the first round, so I made it a 10-10 round, as the Colonel said, to do if you ever get uh, lost. So my final scorecard, Bradley 116, Marquez 113. But that said, this could easily be a split decision. It, it could. And it could. Very easily. And I, and I don't take exception to it. As long as the commission judges get it right, and if two of them go for Bradley, I'm okay with it. I don't mind a split decision. If it happens, I don't know. We'll see. I think Bradley easily won it, but I've seen stranger things. As long as the panel, as appointed by Keith Geiser, gets it right, I'm okay with it. I can live with it. I, I agree with you, and I think, you know what, Bradley, as polarizing a, a figure as he may be, he, he finds ways to win, and he is a difficult, difficult puzzle to sort of figure out. All right, it's Michael Buffer. You'll know in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of win Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards. Glenn Feldman scores the contest 115 to 113. He scores it for Marquez. Robert Hoyle scores it 115, 113, and he has it for Bradley. Patricia Morse Jarman scores the contest 116 to 112 to the winner by split decision. And still, WBO welterweight champion of the world from Palm Springs, California, USA, Timothy Desert. This man scores. retains the title, and I'm judging gave the fans the indication of exactly the way the judges had it. Exactly, you're exactly right. It was close on two of the judges' scorecards. On the other one, it, it was leaning, I believe he had your exact... Exact same exact score I had. Exact same score. So, I, I'm not disputing... But, but I, I go back to Mario, which is the most important thing, and why with all the criticism that judges get... And Timothy Bradley... And Marquez started out with some beautiful shots, landing big uppercuts. And there was a counter-punching fest all night. They closed each round out with flurries. And there was some action throughout. Marquez seemed to win the last few rounds. Some judges had it a lot closer. I had him winning five rounds. Timothy Bradley, though, as he's done his whole career, doing just enough and finding ways to win Closing out a very technical victory. All right, Larry Merchant's moving into position. I think he's got Tim. I think he's getting close. 
Larry, if you got him, take him, because I can't see in the ring. No, he did not quite get him, but he will. That's my man, Larry. Now you got him. Do your thing. Grill him. Do it for me, Larry. Take it away. All right, now, Larry, you got him. Do your thing. All right. Thank you, guys. Congratulations, Tim. And you fought a perfectly disciplined fight tonight, but it appeared at the end that you might have been fighting like you won the fight. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I try to stay as smart as possible, but I, I tell you, I love the fight. I love the action. You know, I had to fight this fight because this was the only way that I can win this fight. If I slug with him, he's the bigger puncher. He probably would have hurt me early on. So I, I wanted to stay smart so I can give myself an opportunity to win the fight. All right, when he changed as the fight wore on because you were beating him to the punch and he became more aggressive, what were your thoughts then? Uh, you know what? I just had to uh, listen to my corner. Joel Diaz told me, hey, don't let him work. Slide inside of him, get underneath him, and close the gap so he can't punch. And uh, that's what I did. Do you realize as we speak that it appears that the difference in the fight was the one big punch that staggered him at the end of the 15th round? That that decided the victory in your favor. Absolutely. Uh, you know what? I just want to thank God for this, uh, for giving me the strength to continue on to go on and keep motivating and stay motivated and going through all of this that I went through. Uh, you know what? That big left hook at the end of the round definitely did save me. The scorecards were really close. 114-113. Uh, there it is. Woo. There it is. Woo. Yeah. He kept his balance. He's a very strong guy, man. But that left hook clipped him. He staggered back. Boom, there it is. Wow, what a punch. I wish I could have followed up on that. But like I said, he's dangerous when he gets hurt. All right. He landed the punch heard around the world in his last fight. Yeah. For you, was this the punch heard around your world? Hey, this is the, this, that was the punch that was just for my world. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. That punch definitely saved me that round. And, uh, you know, I thank God for it. And uh, you know what? This feels great. This feels unbelievable. Where does Timothy Bradley go from here? Uh, the sky's the limit, baby. I told you. I told everybody that would listen to me. Bet on black. Bet on me. Bet on Tim Bradley. Can we bet on you fighting a rematch with Manny Pacquiao if he wins his next fight? Anything is possible. I would love that challenge. I have to sit down and talk to my promoters, my manager, and see what makes sense from here. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank Tim. you very much.